Hello everyone and welcome back to I Can't Breathe, the show where air is free, see the change, be the change And today, well, before we uh, continue on with what we're actually going to be talking about Let's address the elephant in the room uh, No, this is not a new style No, I do not encourage you to copy me um, And no, I'm not trying to break boundaries and create trends right now um, It's just that my hair is being done and it's only half done So that is why my hat is on like this It's because my hair is half done I'm not trying to set a trend I'm not trying to do a new thing I'm not trying to break boundaries with fashion It's just, it's just how it has to be today Day. Um, so I'm rocking it, I'm rocking it with my chest uh, And today uh, we are joined with a very, very special guest who I see has joined uh, right now uh, Whether you're watching this on the Instagram feed, whether you're watching this on the YouTube Or whether you are yet to join the live I welcome you once again to our mini-series which is What is the Goal? Now we loved last week when we had on, um, we had on Bolu and we, were, and we were starting our new mini-series, which was Hear It From The Youth. Uh, but that doesn't mean that what is the goal is done. Uh, the goal still needs to be achieved. The goal still needs to um, be sought after. Um, and that's exactly what we're here to do. We're, we're here to answer the question, what is the goal? And how do we get there? Is this goal really attainable? And can we really get there? Um... So without further ado, I'm going to invite today's guest. I'm actually really excited to have this guy on. Um, we actually, uh, myself and a guest who's been on the show before, Candace, um, actually had a conversation with him. And when he was talking and just the wisdom and everything that he was spewing out, I knew I had to have him on the show. So without further ado, let's invite our guest today, Mr. Ed Michael. I always say, if you have any questions, whether on YouTube or in the in the uh, in the feed, then make sure that you drop them uh, down below because we really want this to be an interactive session. It's not just about my conversation, my Ed's conversation. So it's all of us together. Yes, Ed, how you doing? What's going on? You're right. Can you see me? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this this Android camera is a bit mad. Still, I can't even lie to you. So <laughs> we're gonna have to. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not blessed with uh, all, all the all the high tech Apple nah, stuff. Nah, nah, nah. You know what I mean? so... <laughs> but how you doing, man? You're right. How you doing, man? You're right. Yeah, not even too bad, man. Um, yeah, yeah, I've been. It's been a cool day, man. It's been a cool day. Just been at um, been at work at the school that I'm working in. Um, so yeah, no, it's been it's been been a good day. Can't complain. What about yourself? Good, yeah, good. I, I, I'm, 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 I've been doing some been some, doing secret, some, some secret, secret some thing. secret shifting. Um, <laughs> that, that okay. just, just some uh, just some uh, projects that people don't know that I'm doing yet. Um, oh, okay, them ones. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you got you got a big smile. And you're just like, hey, just watch out. Just yeah, watch yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just know, gotta know. sit on it right now. But watch the space. Right now, but Absolutely, watch the space. Watch the space. Um, Jeez, but but anyway, so uh, so those who uh, don't know you, so could you just, you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm gonna look down every so often because I did know it's in it. Because as I was saying to you, I'm I'm proper nervous. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna yeah, I just a little little tiny notes. The nothing major but yeah so i'm just gonna be looking down every so often but yeah before i start yeah just thank you for for having me on um yeah like what? i said man really honored to be on here and i think it's really sick um what what, what you've been doing obviously with this mini series as well um yeah. and and um, addressing some of the issues that you're addressing um as well as just empowering people in general so big up to you and yeah thank you for appreciate you to come on appreciate here you, um with obviously young tagging and stuff so yeah, yeah, my name is Ed Michael Kakari. Um, actually, my full name is Ed Michael Kwame Ohine Kakari. That's my full name. Jeez, um, yeah, I had to bring it up. But um, yeah, 25 years old. Um, a bit about myself. Um, so in terms of like interests and stuff like that, I like um, sports, like boxing, football, um, live in East London. Um, I work for an organisation called Spot. Um, so as you know, so we basically are an organization that work with um, young people involved in um, crime um, or gangs or who are at risk of committing crimes or being involved in gangs. So it's, uh, it's, um, we don't do a range of things like work with young people in prison, um, young people, and young adults in prison um, who are coming out um, as well and trying to help them stray away from that lifestyle, we work with high, high risk gang members. 
Um, so whether street work or being referred to us by the local authority um, and yeah, just basically help them with stuff like housing, legal representation if they need it. Um, we work with education, training and employment, trying to get them involved in that um, and also um, do schools work. So where we are going into kind of prevent um, or doing intervention so that they don't have to get to the extent of we're working with them when they're involved in crime and stuff. So I do handle school stuff. Um, and so I work in a Peru in Wolfham Forest. So Peru is like a pupil referral unit. When you get kicked out of mainstream school, obviously you go there. Some young people are there for a um, very long time. So they might be there for maybe three, four years. Um, but some are there and waiting to kind of um, work on obviously their behavior um, and different aspects so that they can go back to a different mainstream school so i do one-to-one -one mentoring group mentoring and, and also like family support as well with some of the families that are there so um yeah maybe some that like, obviously might have some young people who got court cases so i'll go and like just support and stuff like that um or yeah just working with the families in general um so that they can access like some of the things that um they need so yeah that's 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 my role in in sparta man that's sick, man. The, that's uh, sick, man. the, uh, the, uh, the uh, place that you said that, that, that children or kids who have been kicked out of make it will go. Um, when, I school, when I was at school, it was called unit. Is that the same thing? Yeah, so, yeah, it's unit. Um, the, the whole thing is, the official term is pupil referral unit, but um, unit is obviously what we all say. So even when I was in school, it's like, yeah, 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 like this person's at unit or that person's at unit. Um but then obviously, yeah, the kind of teachers and that will refer it to refer to it as a proof. Yeah. Sick. 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 So, um, sick. so um now before we get into the conversation, conversation, I do have a question, yeah. for, have you. A question for you. Ah, cool, cool, right. good, right. How does man get a beard? Okay, because okay. like because <laughs> like I'm looking at your massage, I'm looking at your beard, and I'm looking at wow. my face in comparison, comparison and I'm like, yeah. and I'm like Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Nothing grows out of my face. Nothing grows. Nothing grows. Nothing grows. So how can I? Do you know what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough, man. I'm still on this beard journey. Um, <laughs> I'm still on this beard journey. Like so one, one side's even coming through more than the other. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, you know the moustache I've had since year ten. Um, I was, I don't know, it just started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't mad fit, I'm but it I'm was back. visible I'm in year back. ten. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the beard, the beard thing. You know what it is, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna say what my what my sister says. Just eat your vegetables. Is it? That's it. Is it? Yeah. Okay, just cool. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So okay, cool. eat, my so eat my vegetables. And I'll have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't quote me on that. But right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. That's that's what I can say. Yeah. Love I'm it. saying it like I eat vegetables. I'm so bad. My diet is very. It's quite. It's quite bad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so anyone watching anyone and you want to get a beard, just eat, eat your vegetables. And if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, then hit up Ed, Ed and ask yeah. him why it didn't work. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh. Anyway. Uh, so. So. Um. Of course, we're in the series. What is the goal? So I want to know. Are you a person who likes to set goals? Usually. Usually. Um. So naturally, yeah. I'm keeping it real. Um, I don't. I'm very like. Um, I can be sporadic with my work ethic, so it's like higher levels of intensity. Then it's like, oh my gosh, crash down. <laughs> so in terms of goals, really, um, naturally I don't. But I feel like the longer I've gone through life here, yeah, the more I've realised that actually, you know what? Yeah, I need to set some goals because. Um, if you don't have, um, kind of, if you look at it like Google Maps, yeah, like if there's no set destination you're going towards, then you're just everywhere. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're everywhere and anywhere. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I feel like it's important to set goals because it gives you a sense of direction in life. So as I've gotten a bit older and I'm realizing, wow, actually, you know what? Um, I'm not. Um, a, someone who naturally will set goals I kind of do things where I'm like oh I felt inspired to do it or do you get what I'm saying so um, 
realizing that I'm that kind of person, um, I feel like, you know what, actually, um, as I've gotten older, I find it more important that actually, yeah, I do need to set some goals because it kind of gives me, um, yeah, I kind of, if you've, if you've got something you're looking forward to, then it informs your decision, mm. your decision making and your actions in the now. And obviously it makes it um, become more intentional. Um, so yeah, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing the importance of doing it and starting to do it, yeah. or, or being challenged to do it. So, yeah, because um, um, no, it's it's, no, it's, 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 it's it's actually great that you said that because like that because, um, like, I know that everyone who's everyone come on the show, on the show so far so has been far. like, yeah, like yeah, I set goals, like, I set goals. Like, I write them down, yeah. down. Um, um, or like or like I create like a poster create, which is like a blueprint. Of my entire life, my but entire life. I know that that's not everyone's reality. So I 100 percent respect your um, honesty. Um, so, yeah. um, so t tell me, like, t tell me, like, how do you, how do you achieve achieve things things without goals? Without goals. Um. I mean, so I think I think um. I think. It is it, it is difficult. Um, I think up until well, up until um, I say up until now, like, but I think where I, I was more so kind of been looking at um, what I feel um, is my purpose in life, mm. and then kind of dwelling around that realm, if that makes sense. So yeah. not kind yeah. of being absolutely yeah. guided by nothing, but kind of be like, okay, what's what I'm passionate about what's my purpose and trying to be in that space, um, which is good. But I think that, like I said um, before, it's, it's not necessarily effective, especially as the years go by. And I feel like what, what um, people say uh, is true. Actually, the older you get, the more time seems to just be flying. So then it's like, actually, you know what? Yeah, that might be um, a generic thing but there's specific things you want to hit and there's certain things which are um they need to happen in a specific moment so um let's say my goal is um to to do something around um let's say mission work and stuff like that i know that maybe at a younger age i'll have more energy than when i'm older so actually if i set a goal that's specific to where I'm at now, it allows me to have got the most out of myself when I get to a certain age and look back. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I think I've, I've kind of been moving based on what my purpose is. So not necessarily guided by nothing at all, um, but I think it is more effective um, where it comes to being effective with the time you've got to kind of say, okay, bang, 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 set time frames on different things. Mm. Um, yeah, to get the most out of yourself, be effective. Mm. That's so sick. That's and, so sick. And, and, um, and um, I know that I know the that questions that I'm asking right now are taking right now away, from are taking away from your notes, but, your notes. but like, um, like, no, no, that's um, cool. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's just because, like, like, for the people uh, watching later, watching later um, um, and for those who join, those who um, join um, how do you how sort do of you find your, like, so you talked about, so you talked about not, just not just having little goals that goals you strive to achieve. You have like an overall like goal, like an overall yeah, purpose. Yeah, yeah. How do you find how that? You find like, how does a person like, find it? Yeah, um, it's interesting. It's interesting. I think, um, I think for me personally, it took me coming out of what I had always like coming out of spaces that I had always known and trying different things. Um, I think for me personally, I would say it is slightly different in a sense that for like, I found, um, so I, I would, I would say that I personally found my purpose through my faith. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. And, um, so, um, like obviously when I was in my teens, um, like about 16 year old, I, I felt, um, that I had a lot of things going on in life, but I felt a sense of purposelessness. And that actually put, took me to a place of, um, suicide, like, 
contemplating suicide, like, um, and thinking, like, if there's no point, like, I don't want to be here. Like, what's the point of life? Do you get what I'm saying? If you ain't got a purpose. Mm. Um, and so, like, I was in that place, in a low place, had a lot of things that I'd kicked off in my life. Um, and then at the age of 16, um, one of my um, family friends, who I'd met on a holiday when I was 10, um, it's actually, um, you know, Rio. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I met them when I was 10 years old on holiday. Um in, in like Malta, him and his family. Oh, crap. So oh, I saw him. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy story. So, yeah, we linked up there and then just became family friends. Lost contact for about five years or six years. And then on the first day of Westfield, the opening, um, I saw him when I was with my sister, my friend, and he invited me to come to youth group at a local church that he went to, obviously, Youth Way um, at Emmanuel Community Church International. And so, Obviously, I went down to that, um, and um, after, obviously, a while, um, I felt like, you know what, like at this point, I tried a lot of things, um, and I felt like everything I was trying and put myself in, whether it had been to do with drugs or whether it had been to do with, like, like friendship situations, um, whether to be around my, like, people, like, spaces in terms of on the roads and stuff like that. I wasn't involved in it, but just putting myself around, in and around those environments, um, a lot of things that I was putting hopes in, it was backfiring and I didn't feel fulfilled. So I said, you know what, like, God, I prayed a prayer. I said, you know what, God, I'm going to commit myself to you and see where this goes. And I think that time, spending time um, in youth ministry in particular, um, I felt as though God placed in my heart a passion for youth. Um, so it was there, but then my thing was, I had always been around youth. So it's like, how do you know your passion if you've always been around youth? Um, eventually went on to uni. Uh, when I went to uni, um, I was doing accounting and finance. Um, so I had done a, I'd done an internship, obviously at a youth wave, like a youth internship before I went to uni as a gap year. Went to uni, done accounting and finance for like three years. And then um, when I was there, like I just didn't like it, man. Like I'd, I literally was just like, my gosh, this is mad. <laughs> you know that you know that one small, small, like you just gone uni for your parents, innit? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that one there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Small, small, I've done it for that. Another reason as well, I think just you know, like when you're in school, you go, um and society in general, like society is got this pattern, um, for most people, um, and it's not even a like uh, kind of talking about it from a faith perspective it's just in general that actually you go to school primary secondary you go college and then you go uni and then come out and you work and you get a mortgage you get a house you get a family do you get what I'm saying like there's this pattern that you're almost made to think that you need to follow um, and so obviously I'm at, I'm at uni for those reasons not because I want to be or I feel like it's going I'm going this direction but just because I'm there. And a lot of people I knew was in that situation. They just came because that's what you do. Mm. And so I was doing accounting and finance, like some parts of it, um, but overall didn't like it. So um, obviously I'd come out of uni. Um, obviously I'd had a lot of turbulent things going on in my personal life um, to do with faith, um, family, just life in general. Mm. And so I was just in this like turbulent place, um, feeling quite low. Took a trip to America and, um, and um, when I came back, I just decided that, you know what, yeah, I'd spent all, like, my teens um, and, and, like, going into college and university, doing what I thought I needed to do, um, just because. So I was like, you know what, yeah, like, I've been through this uni process. And all I know is that I don't like accounting and finance. Um, <laughs> and so I said, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's what I got out. I said, I don't like accounting and finance. That's what I got out of it. So um, I was kind of just thinking about my passion and stuff like that and just remembering times when um, I was the happiest at life. And it was it was times during, obviously, doing youth um, and working with young people, um, teenagers. And I all, almost just kind of felt a sense of, like, every time I'd thought about, something I wanted to give back or every time I thought about um, things I wanted to do, it was something to do with the age range of let's say 13 to 25 or something like that. So I said, you know what, let me, let me um, get back into a space of um, not taking a job in what I've got a degree in, but let me try and, and, and do it with um, um, go working with in, in a school. 
So um, I found a teaching assistant agency job. Um, so I went to, um, so it was an agency called Veritas. They put me up with a school in Enfield. Um, I didn't like that school in Enfield, I can't lie. Um, so I just felt like, it was cool. I related with the, I just didn't like the coach and the players. So I'm not going to say no names. Um, but um, when the, um, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not going to say no names, yeah, but I got offered a role in, um, in Wanstead High School in Redbridge and um yeah man like it was it was a really good experience. Um I started doing um work with special educational needs young people um and supporting them in class and um outside of class with interventions and stuff like that. That was really cool. I'd never done any work with SEN young people so it's interesting to have my eyes open in terms of um that side of things um and even engaging with them as well. Um, mm. some of the most honest people in the building. It was in the mainstream school, so I was, like, obviously with everyone, but, yeah, some of the most honest people in the building, some of the most fun people in the building, and, um, yeah, I started doing that work, and then when I was in school, like, the deputy had realised that I had a good relationship with some of the kids that they would say is, like, bad kids and that, so he was like, oh, do you want to start mentoring some of the kids that we think are naughty? So started doing a bit of that. Um, and then realised just in that role mainly that actually you know what yeah youth is what I'm passionate about um, definitely mm. at the moment so I think um, yeah that that was the whole, the whole process for me I think it started in church um, and then um, I tested it out as well and then um, really just enjoyed working with this, this group of young people so um, yeah, I think that's how I like, kind of discovered this is what I'm passionate about. This is my purpose. Mate, that was... Mate, that was... That was hard. That was hard. That was hard. That was hard. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was a very sick answer. That was a very sick answer. Yeah, and... Yeah, and... Um, um, yeah, because I find that... Yeah, because I find that... Also, if you're watching and, 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 and you sort of... Sort of Relate to that story, and, and, that story and, and, and and you're still trying to find what you're really what passionate you're about really and what you really want to do. Really um, yeah, just um, yeah, go just back go over back um over what over Ed said what and Ed process said and it properly. Process um, properly. But also, um, but also, I also find that I also find that when you're trying to find something that you're passionate about, about, it could also it stem from your own experience. Experience. That makes sense. So it's like so it's like me. I, I don't have a particular, have a particular age group, age group. Um, but I know that uh, I really want to be, really be someone who someone champions who and supports and brings up and brings people up who are um, people, people who are underestimated. Who are underestimated. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like, or like people, people who are like, seen as like underdogs or people like people who won't make it. Hundred percent. Yeah, like, yeah, and that's. And that, and that stems from my stems own experience, from my own experience feeling like that, and also, like that, and also, also knowing know, in my head like how much head, like how I get sort of get angry, sort of or, angry or, or or sort of, or sort of tight, tight every single time I see, time that, I see that. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Like, I hear that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What ruffles your feathers? Do you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Real, and real. just even as you said it, yeah, like I remember watching. Um, I was watching CNN the other day and there's some guy, um, I forgot his name, but it's called, he was referred to as the education evangelist. Yeah. He um, used to work for Google and he said like, in terms of, he said that we're, we're asking the wrong questions about people. Um, we're asking the wrong questions to people when it comes to their like futures and what they want to do. And he said that we're going to school and we're either saying, okay, what, what job do you want to work? Um, or what do you want to do when you're older? But he was saying that there's three questions that um, need to be asked to people. And he said the first one is, you need to ask someone in life, what what problem do you want to solve? That's the first step here. Yeah. He's saying, secondly, yeah, you need to ask someone, um, what, how do you want to solve that problem? Um, and then the third one is, um, what do you need to acquire or learn to be able to solve it in that way. Do you get what I'm saying? And so when when you look at um like kind of like dreams, aspirations, goals in the sense of 
from that viewpoint, actually, you know what, this is the problem that I want to solve in life, then it starts making you direct your steps now in everything you're doing based on your purpose, like what you're actually here for. Because if something ruffles, something ruffles your feathers, then it means that you care enough about it to pursue pursue it. And um, so when when someone identifies that and obviously the way they want to do it, then the, then the next question is, obviously, what do you have to do? What do you have to learn? What do you have to acquire? What skills do you have to develop to be able to do that? And then I feel like that's, in those three things, that's where you have got your purpose. Do you get what I'm saying? Because mm. now yeah. There, yeah. there is a movement with intent. Do you get what I'm saying? So mm. I found that really interesting what you're saying. I feel like it is true that actually that's the way we need to be kind of um, challenging and asking people rather than, oh, yeah, what job do you want to work when you're older? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. 100%, man. And 100%, you've man. actually and perfectly, you perfectly perfectly segued me segued into... Me into the real reason why we're here, um, especially when you were talking about like when you're thinking about purpose, you're like what what problem in the world or what you want to solve. Um, so my question, which we're going back to the notes now, is yeah, go What is the goal of Black Lives Matter? Yeah, I think um, like for me. Uh, like I said, I'm always I'm going to be looking down um, just in terms of reference point for my notes. But um, I think it is to, I think on one side is to highlight obviously injustice that's been going on with um, black people around around the world. I don't really like the term black here. Yeah? <laughs> I'll say why. I feel like, I feel like black is always, I'll, I'll refer to it as black in this year, but I feel like black comes with, connotation so if i say like if i say a black school versus a white school we have ideas already in our minds based on what we know blackness to be and what we know whiteness to be um if i say a black neighborhood or white neighborhood do you get what i'm saying if i just say like ah um a nigerian school a ukrainian school we're not thinking anything else yeah And the, the problems that are now, obviously, a lot of people think it, a lot of people might have thought it was calling out things that were, but I think there's a lot of things that were that still have effects now, and people don't want to see how what was has effect on what is. Um, but I think as well, it's to challenge people's stance. Um, I, I've heard a lot of people kind of get a bit agitated when um, people have said Black Lives Matter. Um, I feel like... Um, if black lives really do matter, then it, it shouldn't ruffle no one's feathers because mm. it's true. Do you know what I mean? I was doing a... everything to do with like race ethnicity and stuff like that as well hello hello you still there yo hello there? yeah i'm here i'm here i thought right, it right, yeah. right, <laughs> turned into like, one of like, the like, new like, things like, like... <laughs> oh yeah 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 well, it's, it's, like, yeah, well, it's, it's like you know they're waiting there long like Thank five you. minutes uh, <laughs> But yeah, um, but yeah um, beautifully put, by the way. Put, by the way. Uh, uh, so, so have 
again, uh, like another again, kind of like side, another question. side question. And it's, yeah. and it's, have you ever have you personally ever felt, personally felt, felt the, effects the effects of, like, like injustice, injustice or, or anything like that? And how did you deal with it? Specific, like, I think... I think um, in terms of race, like a racist attack, like I've been beaten up here because like I've been, um, someone says you're black and we want to beat you up. No, not necessarily. I think my earliest kind of like thoughts about like ethnicity and all of that. I remember I went to a primary school in, in, in Hines Park called Selwyn and it was predominantly like, it was predominantly like kind of English at the time. Um, and I remember going there. So there's only like a, only a handful of black people in the whole year group and so they they used to be like matches like where it's like black against white um and we had a turkish friend and people was like oh where do we put him like is he going to white side <laughs> i said that it was real <laughs> like sometimes it was like hey come on the black side but people was like nah, nah go on the white side so those conversations were happening early so i think that was like what was he, like year four or five so like i think people's minds were that like, open on it um situations where when i look back even in that school where our group was getting um unfairly treated and we're thinking like yo why are we getting unfairly treated um but like we're getting our ball taken off us for no reason and then it's going to the group where there's like there's no black people so in our minds we're thinking like raw like what's going on mm. is it is it because we're black because we're not do you get what i'm saying and so there's this whole tension i think obviously getting a bit older as well in my teens, always thinking, um, funny enough, yeah, big up Ange, you just joined. Because I remember... Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I, remember situ- I remember a situation, like, where we, um, me and him had gone out to the cinema, and um, we, we were coming back from the cinema in Rumford, yeah, and we were around my area. It was pretty late, like, it was like, it was like one, one o'clock in the morning, yeah, and then the police had rolled up, and literally, they wrote around that time, yeah, in my area, you don't just pull up on people like that because it's a bit dangerous, do you mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and you'd, you'd think it's someone from another estate and that. But obviously, they pulled up, like, like tire screeching, jumped out. Um, their engagement with us was a bit rough. Um, and I remember they was telling my friend, like, oh, yeah, if you don't have your ID, take it to sales. And just got it off. And just situations like that. Like, I remember another situation, me and my um, friend was just standing outside the... Uh, the front of my block and um the police just like watching us for time and you're thinking like i remember thinking at that age like actually what if if we was white like would you not be thinking i was a threat because we were just standing there so all of those thoughts like and stuff and obviously you know people saying stuff like the, the n-word nigga and all this and that um as well so all of these things are going through your mind as you're growing up like certain instances times where you're getting stopped by police and thinking whoa what's going on here um someone who can look just like me, but it's less likely to be stopped by police. And obviously, even now, like where they're looking at it a bit more, the figures are matching what people's suspicions are. Actually, you know what? Like, if you're a black young man, you're more likely to get stopped by police. You're a black young man, you're more likely to get your house raided than if you wasn't. Do you get what I'm saying? So things like that, and even like going to the till, um, you know, self checkout. Like, I'm thinking, I'm a big off old man, you know, and like having to. Be like, ah, oh, you know, shall I take a receipt in case the security man's acting funny? Mm-hmm. You're getting followed around the shop, all of this and that. The way people are talking about um, stuff to do with um, um, knife crime and gang culture, as if it's a black black boys problem. Um, people are like, oh yeah, you know how these black boys and that. But then when it comes to different crimes, yeah, we don't say um, we don't say like we don't say grooming in the UK um, is a I mean, is like, say that paedophilia is a middle-aged white englishman problem we don't say that um, mass shooting is a is a um is a young adult white american male problem so why are we kind of talking about knife crime and mm. gang culture as it oh it's a black problem black on black crime we don't say white on white crime we don't say asian asian crime we don't say do you get what i'm saying like we don't yeah. we don't make any of these references do you get what i'm saying and even looking at stuff in the media 
I've seen some ridiculous things where I remember um, seeing Lukaku getting mixed up with Stormzy. Um, Kano got mixed up with Wiley. Um, I remember even seeing Thomas Lamar, the footballer, getting mixed up with one of his other teammates. It's not even the same number. I'm thinking, come on, man. Like, bro, how can bro, this bro, run? Bro, when, bro, when, when, um, when, um, when um, Nelson, when Mandela died, Nelson Mandela died, yeah. articles were articles posting were pictures, posting of, Morgan pictures of Morgan Freeman. <laughs> bro, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's a joke. It's, a, <laughs> bro, it's an absolute joke, bro. That, you work for a whole editing company, yeah? Like, and you cannot... You guys are professionals. Like, you're telling me... You must, even if you're getting pictures or videos, you must be using software like Google and all of this and that. So, are you, like, how, how does it happen? How many hands, like, does it go through before... Do you get what I'm saying? Like, how many people... How many people said, yeah, yeah, I think that's about right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's ridiculous. Do you get what I'm if that was me, like, who had made that mistake, bro, you know I'm getting fired. So, like, sometimes I wonder... Is it on purpose? Is it intentional? Because it knows, like, people know that, ah, oh, it's going to ruffle a few friends and attract more attention. Or is it ignorance? Do you get what I'm saying? But I think when you go throughout life and you see these things, seeing people getting shot and you know it's because they're black. And even, I think, what hit me the most on a personal one is um, the learning about particularly African-American early history after slavery. So I'm, I'm big on history. Um, and, and so learning about the early startings of the slave trade um, like I remember even being in Ghana on my birthday I was at Elmina Castle and that was the one of the first slave ports in Africa um, that started the, a mini triangle in Africa that became the Atlantic triangular um, or transatlantic slave trade and stuff so learning about all of that stuff and, and um, even things to do with um, um, yeah, early American history and stuff like that um, about like one thing I know I'm rambling on because I can I can no, rumble no, on about this. Nah, but yeah, like I remember. So there's there's certain stereotypes nowadays we see. I remember people used to be like, "Oh, the system's against us." Or the system. I used to be like, "Well, are you playing, man? What are you talking about, man? You just need to work hard, or you just need to." Do you get what I'm saying? But I remember learning about um when when for example one thing when slavery was first abolished, yeah, um in America. Um, ten percent of the South's economy was funded by slavery. Um, so I remember, um, yeah, seeing um, I was watching documentary Thirteenth on Netflix. It was very good. I, I'd recommend it. But basically, um, it, it was saying that because ten percent of of the South's economy was funded by slavery, um, the obviously the South of America is very is very upset that slavery. Someone's gone from being property. To be a person, it's bad for business, yeah. So what started to happen yeah, is people were doing um, writing specific laws, yeah, that would put black people back in prison for a long time. So stuff like um, jaywalking or congregating outside, yeah, and you've got no purpose. Do you get what I'm saying? All of these things, petty theft, yeah. You're getting some mad prison sentences, yeah, and then. What would happen is, yeah, there was they um you'd be imprisoned by the state. So let's say the state of Georgia. So you're you're you was a, you was free, but now you've gone back into prison, yeah. But what the Thirteenth Amendment in the U.S. Constitution states here is that slavery is abolished, except as a punishment for crime. So there's a loophole there. Mm-hmm. Actually, if we can transform these guys here yeah, from being slaves, but now they're free. But if we can make them criminals, they can be slaves again. So people are getting back into slavery because they're prisoners. And what would happen is, yeah, now I'm the governor of the prison. There's prisoners that we've come in because we've written laws specifically for those people to get back in prison. And then you own a corn farm. You can say there was something called convict leasing. So you can say, hey, Ed Michael, um, can I lease um, 1,500 slaves? Oh, sorry, criminals to come and work <laughs> <on> my... <laughs> do you get what I'm saying can at least 1500 criminals to come and work on my corn farm and then all of a sudden you've gone from being a slave to being freed to raw... laws being written to get you back into criminality and then you become you become a slave again because that's the loophole in the 13th amendment so things like that and people would say like in, in this day and age now are oh, you know black fathers are never there or they're hardly ever there 
But that was something that started back then that actually was taking a lot of fathers away from their families. Do you get what I'm saying? They're being imprisoned because of the system that was trying to get them. Do you get what I'm saying? And so stuff like that, when you're learning about all of this, some of the um, things that were, were happening during slavery time to even break, there's a lot of trauma. Like there was one thing called butt breaking and I can't lie, it's a bit mad, yeah, but they used to get... Um, they used to get um, um, male slaves here who were rebellious here and they would tie them to a tree. Um, and this was particularly happening in the Caribbean islands during the slavery time. Tie them to a tree, whip them. And this is in front of everyone. So everyone who's in the camp is watching, whip them, beat them until they're very weak. Then the male slave owners would rape the male slave in front of his family. Do you get what I'm saying? So when things like this are happening, the results of some of those things was that people was committing suicide. People were um, not wanting to be with their families. So you're creating a trauma that is definitely not going to just disappear as soon as slavery is abolished. So all of these things is trauma that is affecting um, systems today. Like those laws that were there to imprison the early slaves were, were is what led to our mass incarceration today. Do you get what I'm saying? A lot of people... I think like 25% of people in the world are imprisoned in America. It's the land of the free. And of those 25% of people in the whole world that are imprisoned in America, like I think black Americans make up like 13% of the country, but nearly 50% of the prison population are black. It's quite mad. Do you get what I'm saying? So there's a system that's been forged that affects things still today. And people be like, oh, it's a past problem. Nah, mate. It's it, rather, my, there's things today from that are still being affected because of what was birthed there and was allowed to keep on going on. And some of the things that we would say that's injustice, it was legalized. You know what I'm saying? Like Martin Luther King was fighting for the right of people to uh, black people to not become second class citizens but to be citizens. Mm. Do you have, because it was legalized by the government. Do you get what I'm saying? Like so, it's a system that has created part of what we see today. Hundred percent. Wow. Uh, everyone right now, write the words, keep it real in the chat because we're keeping it real right now. Ed's keeping it so hundred. Um, and, and, and you were on a massive roll. So on the back of that, you were talking about laws and stuff that has, that had been, and, and little loopholes that have been put in place to marginalize, to control, um, but, but what right now, right now in this day and age, the 21st century, in 2020, 2020 is, stopping is stopping us from achieving the goal achieving of the equality, goal equality, from equality, achieving the goal, achieving where, the goal where, where I'm born, where I'm born and, and little, little Kevin, Kevin is, born, is born, we're born on, we're the, born same on the same place on the place starting line. The and he's not born ahead. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Um, I feel like... I feel like, um, I, th I think it, in one sense, yeah, it, it, it has to be acknowledgement of actually something has happened, yeah, but it's wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you don't acknowledge that something has happened, it's wrong, then it's hard to move forward. So, and I, I take like um, um, the Holocaust, for example, yeah, um, what, when I was in school, um, and obviously the Holocaust is a horrible thing. Do you get what I'm saying? What happened um, in terms of um, to the Jewish people based, like obviously through through the, the actions of, of Nazi Germany and stuff like that. It's horrible. And I remember speaking to um, um, one of my ex-colleagues. She's German. She um, grew up in Berlin. And um, she was talking about the way the German people have addressed it. Yeah and even acknowledged and recognised and made sure that the people of Germany have never forgotten what had happened then has made for a more peaceful society today in terms of with the Jewish community over there and stuff. And don't get me wrong, there's still things that are going on, like even in America, like this harassment um, of Jewish people by white nationalist KKK members and all this and that. So it's not all rosy, yeah, but I think... That acknowledgement allows there to be healing and then progress to move forward. I think when when stuff when there's issues of um 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 to, to do with like obviously black people and, and things that have happened in the past, I don't think there's a real 
um, acknowledgement, widespread acknowledgement of things that have happened in the past or, or, or laws and policies that are, are prejudiced towards black people. And people don't want to come out and say, actually, you know what, um, we're wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? And I think, um, like, even the, the Met Police, the Met Police um, denied institutional racism. But when you look at the statistics, and like that, I was saying, yeah, the, yeah. the amount of the amount of people that have been stopped and searched that are black people as compared to white people, you're so many more times more likely to be stopped and searched as black people, statistically, than as the black people. The amount of times that your house is going to get raided because you're black as opposed to white. And even um, your sentencing, yeah, particularly to do with... Um, so the, 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 usage, the, the usage of drugs, yeah, by black people as compared to white people in this country yeah, is significantly lower yeah but when it comes to sentencing it's significantly higher in terms of the the your high you're very likely to be sentenced yeah, for a drug charge yeah as compared to if you're white you're more likely to be cautioned if you're white for a drug charge so when it comes to sentencing as well like it's it's mad so when you're looking at statistics like that it's like whoa how's that the case particularly when you look at a black minority that lives in this country it's like, whoa, it doesn't make sense. And so I think there needs to be, if, for example, the Met Police here, um, an organisation like that, for example, yeah, doesn't, can't acknowledge that, wow, you know what, yeah, maybe there is some um, unbiased conscious or maybe there is some prejudice or maybe we are racist, yeah, then you can never move forward because then um, staff that work for the organisation can never get the training they need to to be able to be culturally competent and dealing with, the community of people that they're going to be policing. Do you get what I'm saying? And so um, I think not just them, but um, other organisations need to be able to, um, and just society in general, even the way we teach history, I think there needs to be um, a, a kind of reform in the way we teach history. Mm. Like when we when we speak about, um, again, Hitler, we're using some strong adjectives, you know, despicable, inhumane, all of this and that, yeah. When we talk about, people like Christopher Columbus, yeah, and other colonizers, yeah, we use terms like, yeah, they just colonized, you know, the European powers colonized and we make it sound all fluffy. Wow. Yeah. It's all nice. They just colonized. No one also, but no one wants to talk about the forced labor. No one else wants to talk about the massacres that took place to colonize these places that were discovered, even though there actually was already people there. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. We don't, we don't use these strong adjectives to talk about those things um but when we do talk about like the holocaust and and hitler and stuff we do use these strong adjectives so i think um even from school and and even when i think about identity as a person yeah um i don't know about you but being a young black um boy at the time yeah in history the first time i learned about my identity was slave as a slave that's what mm -hmm. i'm being taught do you get what i'm saying yeah and then the next time we're spoken about, yeah, is like during civil rights, yeah, and there's a fight to be equal. There's no, like, kind of mention about actual, like, history to do with me, where I come from, my background. It's all about a fight. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, you know, slavery and then a fight to be equal. So that as well impacts people. So I feel like there needs to be kind of a reformation in that. Um, so that, because that changes the opinions of um Mindsets. I think mindsets are obviously shaped by the information they're fed and stuff like that. And so I think there needs to be a change in also that um, in terms of oh, get in so that people's mindsets based on identity are developed in a different way um, as well. And I think um, yeah, stuff like I think people and voting as well. Um, I would say. These are like, that's a practical thing that you can do. Mm. Um, I think, I think, um, in terms of um, not just like black people voting, but I think voting um, in general that helps you be to be able to push the policies. Um, so even if it's about policing, um, even if it's about laws and stuff like that, um, I think people voting um, plays a big part in terms of the local policy and even national policy. Um, that is allowed to be pushed forward. Um, and so I think it's important for people to do that. And I think, um, sorry, I'm wavering from the question, but I think, I think even um, being willing to, 
just see what has happened because obviously in terms of what's stopping us right now, I think I didn't at a point think it was a problem. Like obviously everything that was going on. Like when people used to tell me, I was like, oh, it's until I watched this documentary, I was like, whoa, um, the thirteenth by Ava DuVernay. She's the same person that wrote When They See Us, um, or directed mm. it. And um, and then I started to look into it, and then it was like, whoa, this is a problem. I need to speak up about it. Um, and I remember speaking to a lot of people, like, and people be saying, oh, I couldn't watch the end of it because it make me angry. But I mean, if you're if if you're not willing to watch what's gonna make you angry, then how are you gonna move? You get what I'm saying? And so mm. I think it's taking a taking an interest in actually. Let me just let me just look into things. Do you get what I'm saying? And I think um, for me, like when I looked into things, it, it stirred up a fire inside of me regarding this whole um, topic of injustice and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I think yeah, those are the things that kind of can stop us from um, yeah achieving achieving those goals. Mm. But the main one is acknowledgement. Sick. Sick. So sick. sick. So hard. Um, I have Um, one more question for you. One more question for you. And that question I always love to to answer last. And you actually actually summed it up quite nicely. You said that you used to believe believe that that when anyone... When we're talking about a system, a system against system us, against and you would say like, "Oh, just, just say, like, work oh, harder, just, just be more, harder, on the grind. be more on the grind." So my last question so is, why do, you think is, why do you think this goal needs to be achieved? To be why not just leave why things just leave the way they are? The How do you get to a place where you where you believe that? Oh, like I don't really care about the system. Like I don't really care about oppression. I just work harder. I just work on my thing. Work on my grind. And that's it. How do you get from that place to realising, oh, but this is the problem that I need to actually work towards. I need to contribute to solving. Yeah, I think it's it's tough, yeah, because I think I think sometimes people don't really care about stuff until they can see how it affects them. But I think that's also the encouragement I give that actually, you know what, yeah, Somewhere down the line, it's gonna it affects you now because this is the world we live in. Do you get what I'm saying? And so that's that's a reason for you to be interested in in thing like whether you're like you. I mean, I, I, obviously I'm speaking as a black person, um, but I mean even down the line with your kids, this this the world we live in. Um, I think where it links up here is because what um what's hard. Don't get me wrong, it's very hard. Yeah, but. Injustice is injustice, isn't it? And and it's hard because I hear some people talk about like what's happened in terms of with black people. And they try and mush it into bare other injustices, and it's kind of like, whoa! You, like let's take it one injustice at a time. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, and and actually acknowledge what's going on here. But um, I think to 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 someone who just cares about injustice if if it's even if it's different to what's going on um i would say that if you care about one injustice you care about injustice in general otherwise you don't care about it at all so if you're if there's other things that you're passionate about and you're saying no that's wrong then you can't say that's wrong but that's okay if that's wrong anyway but it doesn't affect me you have to be against injustice in general and so if I would say to to someone who cares about any injustice, yeah, if if you do care about that thing and it's not this issue of black lives and all of this and that, you can't, I'll challenge you and say you can't just care about that and not care about what's happening with black lives. Otherwise, you don't care about injustice. And Mm. when it comes to um, people in general, I would say that um, somewhere down the line, whether it's you, your kids, your kids' kids, like, do you get what I'm saying? If you're just standing there and and not doing nothing or not speaking out or not seeing what you can do, it's going to affect someone. You sometimes we think, oh, because it's not affecting me. Um, but actually, it, it can affect your kids. Like, I mean, the the steps we take today yeah, are going to affect, like, the futures that are available for our children and our children's children. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. And so um, I think it's important to to play a part. Um, because my, like someone like Martin Luther King, sometimes, like, the whole issue of, like black lives and all this and that, like the struggle that is gone through, you, it can be a bit demoralizing to the point where you just, oh, burn it, man. This is long. 
But then if the people behind us decided that, yo, this is long year, then we wouldn't even probably have a voice to speak out today and say anything. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, that it's important for what we do in terms of our actions. Um, it's kind of like a responsibility. So actually it, it creates more room for the next generation as well. Um, and I think there's certain things that are just right and wrong, man, not to overcomplicate things. Like, I, something I hate is bullying. Do you know what I mean? I even stepped to a brother at uni when I was in a lecture and he just tried, he just kept on trying to pull you some, and something just stirred up in me and I was just like, I can't keep watching this. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and I think this is one of those issues, but in general as well, not just this, but any other injustice that we see going on, we can't just become comfortable with it because it's not in our corner yet. Because before you know it, it will be. Mm. Bro, I have loved, I have loved every second of this show. Thank you so much no, for no, no, no. coming on and fighting so much wisdom. Listen, all right, Ed deserves right now for you to go in the comments right now and and find that emoji with the mind blown and put it in the chat because we need some mind blown you know what yeah you know what yeah i'm gonna do it myself because wow wait i found it there we go this one that one the mind blown emoji because honestly sick Yeah, bro, you had no... You still there? Sorry. <laughs> Buffering. Hello? 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 Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you still. So. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, okay. <clears throat> I didn't hear the last part of what you said. Um, but, but, but again, I want to thank you so much for being on the show, for, for being so open and honest. Thank you to everyone who has been watching. Um, for those who, who have been watching and have been wondering about my hat and why it's slanted, just don't ask questions, innit? Um, no, 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 it's, it's, it's because I'm halfway through getting my hair done. And yeah, that's why it's there. Because look, you can see half of it's done. So uh, uh, yeah, so I'm hiding it and waiting for it to be the other half. Like, do you know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. So thank you everyone for watching. This has been I Can't Breathe, the show where air is free. Thank you so much to Ed, um, just for being Ed and just for being sick, because um, I knew he was going to be sick. Um, and yeah, we are on every single week. Um, the times usually change because we like to work around our guests and we know that our guests aren't always free. So, so make sure that you're following the Young and Talented Instagram and you'll know when we do the show every week. Uh, yeah, I've been your host. Thank you so much to Ed again. Um, and yeah, take care, everyone. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Thank you, Ed. I'll see you later. I think I'm a little bit delayed. <laughs>